Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to another random reading with Beyond BMR. You know, this isn't going to be so much a random reading. Last couple weeks, I found the articles to be kind of clickbaitish. So I found something here, kind of randomly rolling through it on the mystery wire. This had to deal with uh, the spike of UFO sightings during the pandemic. So let's just see what this has to say. I haven't read it, but I thought it'd be cool to see what they came up with here. This is on the mystery wire. The year of the pandemic was also a year of the UFO. A massive statistical analysis shows that Americans in lockdown spent a lot of time eyeing the sky, resulting in an across-the-board spike in UFO sightings. COVID-19 caused massive shifts in how Americans spend their time and where. Millions of people lost jobs. Millions more were forced to work from home. It meant that many had time to gaze skyward. And what did they see? UFOs of every shape, size, and color. Using data beginning 2001, UFO researcher and author Cheryl Costa published the most detailed analysis of American UFO sighting reports ever assembled, called the UFO Sightings Desk Reference. During 2020, she expanded it. It covered the next 20 years of sighting reports from almost every city, county, and state. Casa's new project includes a ranking of which cities report the highest number of odd objects. Phoenix is the number one city, she says, second year in a row. New York City is number two. I find that a little strange. I never used to count New York or its five boroughs. I attended these counties. Now we're counting them as a full city. Las Vegas, of course, number three. Los Angeles, four. Portland 6, yada, 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 it goes down and gives 20 of them. I'm not going th through all 20. Casa does not try to explain the sightings or claim they are alien craft, only, only that they are identified flying objects people have been reported as seeing. Her soon-to-be-released report breaks down the sightings by time of day and other categories, such as an analysis of which cities were up and which are down. And then it goes to a graph and a chart, blah, blah, blah. She also is categorizing the sightings by shape. The shapes people are reporting also come and go by seasons, according to Costa. I was playing with the data, and we were thinking of writing a shapes book at that time. And we started noticing when we started plotting, like, plotting the like months, and then over many months, we started noticing there was a repeating pattern. Sometimes a particular shape would only show up in the fall or go to show up in the spring or the summer or any other time of the year. And we put the whole thing on hold until we could collect all the data on the situation. And so now the Shapes book will be coming out and to specify as to why they come out during the different seasons. You know, it seems like an interesting book. I just want to get into this. I'm cutting this article short here, give you my take. You know, it does make sense that we had many more sightings during the shutdown. During the lockdown, nobody went anywhere. At least in Michigan, we didn't, right? You couldn't even get into a state park or national park. You know, you couldn't do anything like that for at least the first few months. And I think a lot of people did spend time looking up. And I think it makes perfect sense to have more sightings on these things. The one thing that I would allude to is this, that I would bet you that cryptid or Bigfoot sightings were down because a lot of people weren't able to actually get into the parks because I noticed there was a couple around my where I live here in the state of Michigan that you could not get into. They actually had a state organization there to not let you in. Now, people that were fortunate that their backyard was the forest and they were in lockdown, I think those groups of people that were maybe researchers or just want to spend more time in the woods, maybe encountered more things than usual because they had more frequency of time to go into the woods. So I'd like to get that data. I think that'd be cool to analyze. I'm going to check into that. So I made it brief for you guys. Um, hey, last night we had a great show. Jessica Jones was on. Well, she's a part of our team. Jessica Jones, investigate remote viewing investigations with Jessica. We did the Diet Love Pass, broke that down. That was an awesome show. You can see us Four nights a week, Monday, Texas Front Porch. That's at 6.30 Central. Wednesday, Jason McLean questions everything. That's with myself and Jason. That's at 9 Central. 
Thursday brunch with Bigfoot Michigan Rob. That's, of course, me and text, noon central, and the new show, Jessica Jones, remote viewing investigations with Jessica. And that's on 8 central on Fridays. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know how the music sounds. Last week, I think it was way too loud. This is Rob. Have a great day. Thanks. <laughs>